What up, Melvin7 here. Today I've got my Premier League predictions. Uh, I know I didn't do them last week. Uh, this is just the weekly one. I'm still going to wait until the end of the season. Uh, the end of the season? The end of the transfer window to do my league predictions. But I, I think I've got a fairly good idea where I'm putting people. I'm just waiting for sagas like Virgil van Dijk, where he ends up. Uh, if Philip Coutinho leaves uh, Liverpool, all that. I'll also have a transfer video out either today or tomorrow. I know I said I would have them uh, a few days ago, but I was just uh, busy at the time, so I couldn't really uh, upload it, unfortunately. But anyway, let's get straight into this. So, first game we've got is uh, Bournemouth versus Manchester City. Now, I mean, you would just expect Manchester City to steamroller Bournemouth in a sense. I know Bournemouth are a decent side. They've flown really under the radar last season. They did phenomenally well to finish where they did. Um, although when they lost Ake to Chelsea for the latter end of the season, they kind of dropped down again. But now they've got him again. Uh, no, did they? No. Did he go to Bournemouth or did he go to Watford? He went to Watford, didn't he? I think so, but regardless. Uh, they also, Jermaine Defoe finally started in the uh, cup game. So he might start up front. So that'll be another threat that they've got. Apparently he wasn't fit enough. Uh, but Manchester City, fresh off the back of a draw, which was disappointing for them. But you, you just look at their squad and you think, surely they've got enough. I know it's a way... Uh, but yeah, I expect Manchester City to win, I'm going to say 3-1, I still think their defence is their issue, so I reckon they will concede, maybe Defoe will get his first goal, by the way, if you can hear loads of shit outside, I'm sorry, this room gets so fucking hot, I've got to have the window open, and there's a million sirens because the main road, so if you can hear that, I apologise, but anyway, 3-1, Manchester City, next game we've got is Watford versus Brighton, Watford I, I think are going to have a really, really good season. They've made some phenomenal buys. Uh, you've got Andre Gray, you've got Chalaba. I'm fairly certain they signed Aki. If I'm wrong, then my apologies. Uh, they've signed Rich Charlinson, that Brazilian. He looks like he, he could be a decent signing for them. You know, I, I'm impressed by them, and I reckon they'll, they'll push to potentially get close to the top half, potentially even get top half, like 9th, 10th. Uh, I guess we'll see, but... Yeah, like, I, I, Brighton uh, have looked decent-ish. Um, I don't know, like, for, for a championship side coming up, yeah, I know they, they've had a really poor start, but uh, you, you kind of expect that, so it, it's just whether the players they've bought can adapt quickly enough to save them from relegation. Like, I think their target is obviously just to get 17th, but I think Watford in this game will have a, re uh, a pretty comfortable ride, uh, and I'm going to predict 3-0 Watford, to be honest. Like, I think Brighton might pick up some points later in the season, but I don't know, Watford, i, I just got a feeling that they're going to do well. Next game we've got is Newcastle versus West Ham. Both teams in need of a result. Both have lost their first two fixtures. Um... And yeah, the only positive for West Ham at the minute is uh, Hernandez. And for Newcastle, is there any positives? Maybe that they've still got Rafa Benitez. That's probably about it. Uh, this new signing, Josselu, can he do anything up front? Uh, will he start? Um, probably, you would imagine, given he's a new signing that's now been at their club for a week or so by the time they play their match. So I reckon... In this one, it's going to be a tale of two shite defences, really. I reckon Newcastle are going to score, West Ham are going to score, but they're both going to concede. Well, obviously, if both score, they're both going to... Way to state the obvious. But uh, anyway, I reckon this is going to be a 2-2 draw. I think neither team will lose it. Um, but yeah, it'll be an entertaining game. Uh, next game we've got is Crystal Palace versus Swansea. Um, Crystal Palace are taking time to adjust to uh, Frank De Boer's system. He's the polar opposite of Sam Allardyce, of course, with the way he plays. And uh, that's going to hurt Crystal Palace uh, at the start of the season anyway. But if you do want to come up against someone, you would probably say Swansea. Now, they were impressive against us, particularly you know up until the first goal went in when Eric Bailly scored. And then, obviously, we just had our three-minute insane salvo where we scored three goals. But apart from that... And apart from the fact they lost 4-0, they were actually pretty decent throughout. And they had a couple of chances of their own, which I was surprised at because they've lost Gilfie Sigurdsson and uh, he was a key player for them last season. So, yeah, I, I really think the, uh, that Swansea will hold their own. I reckon Palace will take time to adjust. 
So I'm going to say 2-1 Swansea. Next, we've got Huddersfield versus Southampton. Uh, Southampton have Gabby Hedini back. Uh, he's scoring again for the first time. Oh, God, I think it was January. And Huddersfield have obviously had a phenomenal start to uh, Premier League life. Are they second at the minute with two wins? I seem to remember Hull doing something similar, though. They fit, uh, won their first three games last season and they still went down. So, you know, it, it's hard to judge. But Huddersfield have looked really good in the Premier League thus far. Four goals scored, uh, zero conceded. And they won a big potential relegation battle towards the end of the season already in Newcastle and Huddersfield so they won that one that was important Southampton on the other hand I think that's going to be another challenge for them uh, as in Huddersfield so I reckon Southampton will win this one uh, and I'm going to say 2-0 I reckon Huddersfield will give it a go but I mean they are expected to get relegated by a lot of people so if they again finish 17th then that's a great season for them so you know, six points out of nine still isn't that bad. Um, then we've got Manchester United versus Leicester. Now, we've won both of our first games 4-0. And the last time we played uh, Leicester at Old Trafford, we won 4-0. Uh, <laughs> now, do I expect that to happen again? Probably not. Uh, but I do expect to win. Uh, I am wary of uh, Vardy this season. Like, he's looked like potentially the Vardy when they won the league. Uh, he, he's been on fire so far not just his goals just his movement his positional sense like he, he genuinely does look as though he's that Vardy not the Vardy from last season or certainly the first parts of last season uh, Leicester I, I do think we'll win and I do think we'll score goals but I, I do think we'll probably concede our first goal and I, I, I'd be shocked if it isn't Vardy who scores it to be honest uh, he, he obviously scored against us to break Ruud van Nistelrooy's consecutive game uh, goals in consecutive games record 11 or whatever the hell it was so yeah I, I do reckon because it's at home you know we'll, we'll be relatively comfortable we know how to play Leicester now but they are still a threat and Harry Maguire looks like a really really good signing again not just because he scored but you know a solid centre back for them so I reckon we'll find it difficult, but like Swansea, we'll eventually break them down and win. I'm going to go for a 3-1 win. I do reckon Vardy will score, but I mean, at the minute, we're just on cloud nine. And I'd be surprised if we drop points uh, at Leicester. Anyhow, next we've got West Brom versus Stoke. Pretty, you know, standard teams with each other. Uh, both not really known for exciting brands of football. Both quite happy to get kind of mid-table solidity yeah that's the right word so I mean everything in this you kind of think draw I know Stoke haven't been uh, great this season so far but they've signed Hesse he was a really really good no was that Southampton it was probably Southampton was it what am I on about Ugh. kits like <sighs> <laughs> honestly I know what I'm on about it might not seem as I do but uh, yeah wow I can't believe I just said that but um, you know what it is Southampton he went to isn't it fuck's it I'm gonna check like I'm, I'm fairly certain it is uh, no I was right first time I need to trust my instincts he did go to Stoke Jesus Christ I don't know what it is but ignore that anyway uh <laughs> I, they're pretty much even match teams is what I'm going for so I'm gonna go for a draw um, I'm gonna say 1-1 one, one. Uh, pretty standard draw here uh, next game we've got Tottenham against Burnley Tottenham are at home um, and I mean I know Wembley uh, they struggle but surely you can do something against Burnley Burnley have looked good at the start of the season considering they've lost two of their key players in Michael Keane and uh, Andre Gray I expected them to get like whitewashed but uh, they, they've held firm at the minute and you know Sean Dyche is a miracle worker to be honest but you, you've got to think surely Spurs are going to win this one like if they don't win and it's at Wembley it, like my god it'll just it, it could spiral their season man because it, it'll just get in the players heads oh shit we can't play here they don't do well in wide pitches they're going to have to get used to it but I mean, I just can't really see any other result than a Spurs win. So I'm going to go 3-0 Spurs. Uh, I reckon Kane will break his August hoodoo uh, and the fact that he's never scored in August. Uh, next, we've got Chelsea versus Everton. Now, 
this one's interesting because Everton have looked good and Chelsea have looked shite and then really good against Spurs. So, yeah, Rooney's playing phenomenally well for Everton. Like, to get a draw against Manchester City is pretty phenomenal. Um, and obviously scored on his debut as well. So, you know, he's loving life at Everton and fair play to him. Uh, Chelsea, it depends which one turn up. Like, is it going to be the one at the start of the season against Burnley where they got completely battered, although they lost 3-2 in the end and went down to nine men? Or is it going to be the one that showed that they have spirit and fight against... Uh, I've just said the team name for fuck's sake. Um... Fucking Spurs, god damn it. Um, I should really have shit written down. Like, I know it in my head, but when called upon to actually, you know, trust my instincts or whatever, then sometimes I get it muddled up. But uh, anyhow, Chelsea Everton, it's a hard one to call, it really is. I'm gonna be safe. I'm, I'm gonna say 2 2. Like, I, I genuinely believe that uh, Everton have a lot about them. Uh, Gilfie Sigurdsson's wonder goal in the Europa League. Oh my god. What a strike that is. Wouldn't be surprised to see him score and uh, maybe Sandro Ramirez, their other striker uh, that they've got alongside Rooney. I know he didn't play in the last game but I don't know how Coleman's going to set up. And as for Chelsea, um, well if Hazard's back then maybe they'll win but if he's not then I'm going to say 2-2. Uh, and the last game, Liverpool-Arsenal, the biggest game of the weekend. Um... I mean, both have a shit defence, so what's the odds on it being nil-nil? Uh, nah, like, genuinely, I'd be shocked if there isn't at least five goals in this. At least. Both of them have teams that are far, far better at attacking than defending. Um, Arsenal have had problems this season with their uh, three-at-the-back system. They're still trying to, you know, figure out how to, how to work that with the players at their disposal. Um, and Liverpool, again, it's the same story every single year, it seems. They're great going forward, shite in defence, shite at uh, set pieces. So, yeah, I, I just want this one to be an entertaining game. And uh, if I had to give a prediction, I'm going to say 4-3 to Liverpool. Like, I, I reckon we could see another 4-3. Knowing now that I've said that and knowing that everyone kind of expects goals, they'll probably sit tight and it'll be nil-nil. But uh, I'm going to go with 4-3 there. So that's my predictions for this week. Let me know what yours are. And as I say, I'll have a transfer video probably tomorrow uh, when final deals are finalised. Like Mbappe, Dembele should hopefully be done by tomorrow. If not, I'll still bring the video out. So hopefully you have enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video. And yeah, peace.